everyone, Freedy here here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video for this week's content. Where today we will be focusing our attention to the new War Mind Cell mods that have honestly got to be one of the best mods ever released for what they're worth and for what they pack in terms of dishing out damage. Out of all the mods that have been released in game that have been OP such as Thunder Coil, nothing has come as close to the War Mind Cells with their damage, their range, their killer combo and their flexibility for allowing us to get creative. I'm going to show you a very simple but effective build that you can use for whatever content and for whatever class you want and it will allow you to suppress your targets, apply burn dot damage to your targets and also be able to wipe out a wide group of targets from a singular explosion. No clickbait, this build will technically allow you to create a miniature nuke of the destiny world and honestly I believe these mods will become super effective further down the line in the new Grandmaster Nightfall missions that are soon to be released. With further ado, let's push forward into the Nuketastic build. Starting off with the subclass, we will begin with the Killer the Aggressor to make full use of our suppression grenades, shield bash and perks that can enhance their effects further. The Killer the Aggressor is the type of subclass that will be commonly used in PvP for its perks such as shield bash which is effective against one-shotting players and disorientating anyone near them. Then we have Superior Arsenal for gaining the grenade energy back from grenade kills and then second shield for a second shield of course. Combine this now with something like Doomfang Pauldron and you now have a super aggressive PvP build that is great for locking down or cornering players from escaping. However, we are not going to be using this build as if that was the case, I would have named it something really cool like Superior Pauldron or Doomfang Arsenal plus we're meant to be focusing on War Mind Cell builds so yeah let's forget that for now. Instead, we are going to be focusing these perks into PvE instead, where it will help with stopping enemy movements and allowing us to set up War Mind Cells with much more ease, so you can get the full effect there and then. Out of these, Superior Arsenal will probably be the one that offers the most for the combo section, as against tougher enemies, our grenades won't kill them outright, but it will suppress them long enough that once we do proc a War Mind Cell, we can then go ahead and reapply the suppression effect again with the War Mind Cell mod and then finish them and then. Or we can use our shield bash instead for the same thing, but either way it will allow us to set up groups of ads easily so we can use our one myself for one large AOE blast and wipe them all up in one go. For grenades, it's recommended you use the suppression grenades for the killer combo I mentioned above, but as the one cells will come with this suppression full effect that we have in this build, you may not need to go with it if you decide to go with that being the case. Instead, you can go with the other two grenades of your fancy, if you feel like going that way. For the weapons, you're going to need a Sarah 7 weapon of your choice, and then the Twin Tail Exotic Rocket Launcher. Your secondary is then down to you. The 7-7 weapon can be whatever weapon that you can either access or have in general, as any of them can activate the Warmind Cell there and then. The AR, which is the one you can get for ranking up the Earth Bunker to level 3, is probably the most easiest in terms of getting and making full use of, although perks on it may not be the greatest for most players. I would recommend trying to look out for perks such as Swashbuckler, Rampage or High Caliber Rounds to make the weapon a bit more usable in both PvE and PvP if you decide to go ahead and use it. If by chance you don't have the following weapons, there are mods that offer you a chance to proc it via Solar Splash Damage aka Wrath of Rasputin or Tyrant Surge which works off of Arc abilities or Super. Your secondary can be anything of your choosing as you're not limited down for this section, but I would recommend you have something that either hits hard or has a high amount of ammo within it, as the War Mind Cell combo we are going for will reduce the amount of damage we will do to the cells, so more shots will be needed to proc the explosion. A trusty free burst sidearm or aggressive frame shotgun that has a good amount of impact should do the trick or even an SMG with high reloaded magazine count can also help. Our heavy will be the two-tailed fox exotic rocket launcher which hasn't been talked about in quite a good while from a lot of players since Forsaken and this is a rocket that can still do wonders in game modes such as gambit or strike missions with its assaulting perk that allows you to shoot two rockets with one being solar and applying solar dot damage and the other being void which suppresses your target. A very slept on weapon that we will be using solely for boss to ultra dps and fits nicely into what would ID try to go for overall. But one thing you need to be aware of is that the suppression effect doesn't affect ultras to most bosses, so in many ways you will only be applying the solar damage. If this does put you off then by all means find another heavy 
that suits the build much more better. If not, stick with the exotic and we'll go from there. For stats, not much focus on required here except for the same usual things such as resilience and recovery being above 50 for the sweet spot. Our discipline and strength stat however can be pushed further if you wish to utilise your million grenades more often throughout the content with things like higher discipline, allowing you to push others much more easily with it faster regen and then stacking it further with the superior arsenal perk. For our strength stat, although it's low, we can further improve this to be within the 50 to 60 ranges if we want to use less grenades and more melee suppression. Handy against the majors and to some ultras where we can't physically use our grenades to take them out because of maybe angle, maybe positioning or we just generally can't use our grenades in general. Ideally, trying to balance out these stats so that you can fully utilise all the skills is the best way forward. But not all of you can pull this off which is why it's best to focus in one or two stat areas so you can dedicate your points in the areas that are much more needed. For the armour we don't need specific sets to pull this off thanks to the recent armour adjustments to where wearing any seasonal armour piece will now allow us to slot in whatever mods we have available. Although I do have the 7 enclosure chest piece which is a fairly simple and easy to use exotic which fits well for the build, you don't need to have it to fully create the build. If you wish you could swap this out for anything else which may be better suited for you. This is all down to you at the end of the day but you will need to have a seasonal slot with one void, two arcs and one solar to create the build overall. With that explained, here are the necessary mods you need to have. Head, recovery and cellular suppression mod, arm strength, impact induction, global reach mod, chest, recovery mod, leg, resilience and burning cell mods, mark, hands on, distribution and hammer of the war mine mod. Now there's a lot I would love to talk about when it comes down to using the new mods from their amazing combos, their effectiveness, their damage, their flexibility, etc. I could go on and on, but you guys just want the plain and simple facts so here it is. Through testing the War Mine mods, they have quite a ridiculous range built into them that can be extended via the Global Reach mod for even more range and even more damage. In general I was looking at around 10 plus meters without the Global Reach active and then with the mod added back on, it extended it to at least 20 plus meters, which with the tip just barely hitting the ultras in the tribute hall. If you were to go ahead and use this, say for example in Gambit, it's around the same range to take out all non-ultra enemies in one go within that one venicity. And from there you can see the damage and range low is definitely worth investing in. If you haven't done it now, it's definitely worth using. In my build, I have the Global Reach mod to expand the range and damage, then I have the Cellular Suppression mod for special all targets within my Venicity for around 7-ish seconds. And then for even more damage, I apply the Burning Cells mod, which applies solar dot damage onto all targets once it's detonated. All of these, thankfully, can be stacked into one tiny orb, and all of these work off of the Global Reach mod, so more range and damage overall equals even more carnage. While we have that, I've also added in the Twin Towers Fox Rock Launcher for DPS of course, and then we have the Suppression Grenade or Melee for further suppression all targets, if need be. But now you can see what I'm trying to go for, a build that focuses heavily on suppressing everything around you and then wiping them all out in one big explosion, and thanks to this, you will see many successes with this. It's kind of funny seeing such a unique but extremely powerful build that anyone of any class can put on and just completely wreck most PvE modes such as Gambit, where Gambit has become even more of a basic laugh at this point as you can use this and wipe out groups of adds there and then with a singular ability, while the higher tier Nightfalls will now allow you to bypass some of the tougher enemies that will require specific weapons as long as you prop the Warmind cells off. If you do go with that, I would also recommend putting on the Artifact mod, Hammer of the Warmind which can lower enemies damage and ability recovery while also de staggering the unshielded ones. With this build, I've been able to run through many, many Gambit missions with ease, having the option to suppress inflict solar dot damage and then detonate myself for max damage and it's such an effective tactic that you will see others follow in the same footsteps, not as same as you with the build wise but similar. So if you really want to inflict maximum carnage, have other teammates or friends 
follow suit and this will allow you to rush through content like there's no tomorrow. It's super simple and fun for everyone and I highly recommend that you go ahead and test this out because this time this season mods are actually worth investing in. But like always, what's the catch? There's a few things you should be aware of that you may be fine with or it may annoy you. It's 50-50 so you have to look into this and see exactly how you can adjust it. Cellular suppression weakens the damage you do against all my cells, which overall means you have to use more rounds just to detonate it. This may not be a big issue for some, but say if you were in a high level nightfall and you had an unstoppable enemy and others charging at you. Now in this situation you may be able to suppress them before it's too late, but at the same time you may not be able to, which overall means you're screwed. Best way to count on this is to ideally have the correct mod attached to your weapon to stop the unstoppable from charging at you, or have a weapon that can be fired quickly but hits hard, so a sidearm or aggressive frame shotgun that can detonate the cell there and then, which overall may save you and your teammates lives. Now for number 2, it's not always going to be effective when there's only a handful of enemies left on the field, aka strikes or gambit. As sometimes when you pluck the cell, there may not even be any enemies left to where sometimes it's not going to have no use whatsoever, which can lead to you using more ammo just to detonate it or generally leaving it there which is pretty much a waste. To counter this, basically just be fully aware of your surroundings and if you see your teammates are basically bulldozing the enemies around you, just use your other weaponry to avoid this. For number 3, it doesn't work in PvP and this is for the best of everyone. The build can work in PvP fine if you're still going to use it for the run of the mill, but you can't proc all my cells as if that was the case, boy PvP would be a absolute state. I mean, n no one would play it at all. Think of mayhem, but on crack, but with war my cells everywhere. That's exactly what would happen if it was introduced into PvP. So. Don't think that this is going to be the next PvP build that everyone's going to use because it's never going to be the case. So there you have it, your very own and very easy to put together Warmind Cells build that will bring you endless amount of fun in the highest to lowest content available. This build can be mixed and matched for your liking and can offer you a great way of controlling the field in terms of enemy engagements to setting things in stone. This is one of the many builds I have in place, so hopefully once this one's out I can then focus on the next one and then get that one dished out for you, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content, if you do that type of stuff, a link is always down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.